Hello and welcome to Battle of the Beast episode number 14. Second battle of round two. I wasn't actually planning to do this episode today because I was going to do um, Pokemon battles. More Pokemon battles anyway. Uh, I decided against that for the simple reason. Um, yeah, I kind of left this video till the last minute. And um, I decided... I, and I decided that doing one Battle of the Beast would be better than doing multiple... Multiple battles from Pokemon. Uh, like, more efficient and also more worth it, I guess. <laughs> so this one is kind of a tricky matchup when it comes to picking an arena and how the fight would go out. Because both of these beasts are unique in their own way. And um, I actually, well, like with every battle, I don't have a plan or script of how this battle turns out. Um, but... Something I do want to add, though, is that um, uh, the is that they won back to back in round one, so one one run, one one in one battle episode five of Battle of the Beast, and the other one won in episode six. Uh, so yeah, and if you don't know them already, we got Spyros the Ghost Phoenix won in episode six against Arax, and Tempera the Time Stealer, who won against Skolo the Bladed Terror. Blade and Monster, I think, actually, in um, episode 5. So, with that being said, let's get into this battle. First things first, though, the arena. Now, for simple, for a reason which I will explain later, I'm picking the Forbidden Lands. Because one was fought in a past version of Avantia, whilst another one was technically in Rion. So, both places they haven't been to before... And um, I do need to say, I would say, quite good. Quite good destination spots for a holiday. Speaking of which, um, I'm recording this a couple minutes after I got a comment from someone on my last Battle of the Beast video. From Joshua Clow. I will say, your comment made me laugh. Uh, this was Vegra's worst holiday ever to Gwildor. I agree. 10 out of 10, won't visit again. Uh, so... Okay, that, that that's actually all I had to say, because that was absolutely hilarious. I, I find it funny. So, um, because <laughs> I remember describing it as like a holiday and a break for the landlord for the Colosseum, for the combat arena. Anyway, this battle will be, as I said, in the Forbidden Lands. You'll find out the reason why later. Let's say, uh, I don't want to say the Dead Peaks, Dead Forest. Oh, actually, how about the Canyon? How about the canyon in the Forbidden Lands? You know where Tom fought Nixa. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called the Dead Canyon or the Canyon of Death or something. Something with the word dead in it and the word canyon in it. That's all I know. Um, yeah, I'm thinking maybe there because I think that'll be... Well, actually, no, 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 no. We're going to like a plains area in the in the Forbidden Lands. So final, final choice, the plains, the plains area. And as the Forbidden Lands are rather small... I may make them go to a different area. That might be fun. Yay. So, let's get into this battle. So, we're going to open up with Tempera coming out of Nyx's little cave in the canyon. Just looking around everywhere, looking for our next victim to kill. And Spyro's just flying, flying over the Forbidden Lands for some random reason. I don't know why I'm flapping my arms, but okay. Um... And they see each other straight away. Spyros uh, creates a fireball in her talons and launches it directly at Tempera. Tempera is able to wrap her, one of her tentacles around a rock and uh, put it in front of her eye, blocking it from the fireball, where the fireball hits it and smashes, and the fireball disappears. Spyros, by the time Tempera clears the smoke from the fireball, she sees that Spyros is actually gone. So, um, so thinking that. She just left. Spyros goes, slivers out of her canyon cave thing. And uh, going towards the plains of the Forbidden Land. I don't know if there is actually a plains in the Forbidden Land. But I'm going to say there is just for convenience. Uh, um, then Tempera suddenly gets this uneasy feeling. Where she feels like she's about to be hit on, the, hit on her behind. Oh, well, hits on the back of her head or something. It's a big head, okay? You know what Tempera's like. Uh, so she whips her tentacle round and actually hits something, smash, 
where a very loud thud hits the ground and um, something sharp pokes the uh, one of Tempera's tentacles on that's on the ground. Tempera turns around to see Spyros just lying down there, um, just uh, a bit, just a bit, no, not really unconscious, but winded from the hit on the head that she got. So, um, what what Tempera does is that she wraps her tentacles around Spyros and uh, starts. Um... See, this is what I mean, but <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, <laughs> and starts okay, so starts wrapping her tentacles around Spyros, lifts her up with all the strength, and starts smashing her down to the ground as quick as she can, as hard as she can. Spyros then wakes up from well, regains consciousness or something, and uh, starts lighting her feathers on fire, burning Tempera's tentacles, causing her to unravel, and Spyros is able to get free and just flap her wings high in the sky, was um, forming two fireballs between each of her talents and launching both of them at her by tossing them in the air, then hitting them down with her wings, giving them more velocity or verocity. I know it's one of those words. Uh, one of them misses Tempera, whilst the other, another one hits one of Tempera's tentacles, where Tempera screeches in pain. But um, Tempera is able to get another tentacle and hit, throw it directly at Spyros, hitting one of her wings, causing her to come down lower. And that's enough. And it's enough space between them for Tempera to reach out towards Spyros, and put a tentacle right on her forehead. And suddenly, uh, from what from Spyros's point of view. The world starts morphing and changing into something that's more lush and green with more vibrant colours and you see the sky turning blue instead of that horrid, putrid, dark blue-ish thing. Yeah. It's gone fresh. <laughs> the forbidden land and the dead the deadness is no longer dead. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh so yeah, Tempera does have the Ability to time travel, and um, we, me and Lucas agreed that we can do time travel. So yay! <laughs> so I had fun. That is why I chose Forbidden, the Forbidden Land. By the way, uh, Tempera releases her tentacle that's on Sparrow's head, but still keeps her grip on Sparrow's um, talon, so then she can't get away. Sparrow looks around to see this greenery, and gets and suddenly gets a bit of a bright idea. So, what she does is that she conjures up a fireball between her talons. Uh, bear in mind, uh, Tempera is holding her talons, but by the legs, not her actual claws. And Spyros uh, whacks it straight towards Tempera, hitting her right in the one big eye, causing Tempera to screech in pain and causing her to release her grip on Spyros. So Spyros quickly flies to the sky and flies towards over the dead forest. Tempera looks up, uh, looks back very angry and very um, wanting revenge and goes into the forest herself. Um, and thus Spyros' plan begins in motion. She conjures up two fireballs and launches them both in separate directions of the forest, causing a fire to um, sprout up, burning all the grass surrounding the forest. That means Tempera is completely trapped in that forest. Uh, for plot reasons, um, the, for the fire isn't going into the forest. Isn't going into the forest. Tempera notices that she's stuck or trapped, and temperature and temperature. Tempera wraps her tentacles around one big tree, lifts it up out of the ground, and throws it directly towards Spyros. Spyros sees this and conjures up a rather large fireball to chuck directly at that tree, burning it like hitting it. And um, with so much power, it hits it and goes right through the um, and goes right through the tree, breaking it in half, missing Spyros completely. And it continues to go into the forest where it goes to hit Tempera, but it actually misses Tempera and hits a tree that was right behind her, causing a fire to start right behind her. And the tree starts to catch fire, where eventually the point where it hits starts losing strength in the bark where it just burns off and the tree starts falling down towards Tempera. Tempera goes to move but Spyros saw that coming and saw that happening. Uh, this is all going to Spyros' plan by the way because she is a clever phoenix. 
and um, chucks two more fireballs um, to either side of Tempra to where she can't actually get away, uh, to where she stops from trying to run away. And um, Tempra realizing that she can't get out, the tree hits her direct, holds it up as much as she can with her tentacles. But it's getting a bit, it's getting too hot on the tree because it is on fire after all. To where she has to release her grip and it just hits her on the head, smashing her to the ground. And Spyros uh, starts chucking fireballs all over the forest to burn it down to the ground. And um, after what seemed like hours of the forest being on fire, which is actually legitimately probably one hour, where the forest is now completely extinguished from the fire, all of it's in ashes. Um, yeah, team trees, am I right? Um, I'm sorry, I had to do that joke. Um, so, yeah, uh, Spyros thinks that she's won, but Tempera um, strikes the tentacle out of the ashes and comes out wounded, covered in black soot, but still alive. Spyros sees this, and uh, Tempera goes to find a, tries to find a rock with her tentacles to chuck at Tempera, Chuck at Spyros, but she can't seem to find one. By the time that's happening, Spyros conjures up a fireball almost larger than herself and chucks it directly towards Tempera. Tempera, realising there's nothing she can do to dodge this thing and nothing that she can use to deflect it, covers her eye with her tentacles and braces for the impact. It hits um, the tentacles square where they were protecting her eye to the point where they go limp and she can't actually use them anymore because they are that burnt and they have been broken by the power of that fireball. Spyros, realising that she's going to win, uh, chucks, conjures up another fireball, chucks it directly towards Tempera. Tempera, having no way of dodging this, closes her eye, hoping her, her eyelids can protect her eye, but it doesn't because of the weak... Um, weak thinness of the skin protecting the eye where it just burns the skin off completely and hits her directly in the eye knocking her out and what Spyros does is that she comes down right next to Tempera and just to make sh and just to make sure to finish the job she um lands her talons on Tempera's eye digs her talons into the eye oh my god this is very grim and pecks at her eye repeatedly with her beak to the point where Tempera seems to be unmoving. She probably has been unmoving since the fireball hit her. Um, and that is it. I'm not describing it anymore. But from the way it sounds and the way that is pretty obvious, you guys. Spyros has won. Tempera has lost. Now, um, if you think Tempera should have won, please in the comments below why you think that. Um, but unfortunately, my word is final and Spyros has won. I will say, though... Even though Spyros won and Tempera lost, on the bright side though, I was able to use Tempera's ability to kind of show roughly what the Forbidden Lands might have looked like before it gone all dead. So um, I thought I think that'd be a nice thing for you guys to see, and that's why I that's why I chose for the Forbidden Lands. But with that being said, that is all for this time. If you like what you saw, leave a like, leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe. Press the little notification bell down in the corner below. This corner as well. And I'll see you next time with another Battle of the Beasts. Not directly after this video, but at some point. Which I'm not going to take the matchup to. Because I, not only that, I can't remember the matchup. But also, I like the element of surprise. Until then, peace out.